Welcome to this lecture on IS21. IS21. And please note the name of the standard. Effects of foreign exchange transactions. But effects of changes in foreign exchange transactions. Let's go and look at the uh, glimpse of this standard. So IS21. The effects of changes in foreign exchange rates. The effects of changes in foreign exchange rates. So this standard accounts for the fact that rates change. You know, we are in Ghana. Perfect example. We began the year with three CDs. Somewhere in the middle of the year is five CDs. Now at the end of the year, we are talking eight CDs. So the effect of the changes is what we are accounting for. Remember that. So the changes will lead to either a gain or a loss. And how you account for that is what the standard is about. How you determine the rate to use is what the standard is about. Okay, so pay attention. Give yourself reason why you have to read the standard. So you can account for the changes in foreign exchange rates. So to do that, you actually have to know your rates. So a foreign currency is any currency other than our currency. So our local currency is Ghana CD. Ghana CD. Any currency other than Ghana CD is a foreign currency. And not just that it is our local currency, but the name, the correct name is our functional currency our functional currency remember we can be in ghana and our functional currency may not be the ghana cd it can be the dollar but here currently in our country our functional currency is the ghana cd so any currency apart from the ghana cd is a foreign currency and therefore we always have to establish the rate between the functional currency our ghana cd and any foreign currency like the dollar, the euro, the pounds, the CFA, any other currency. Okay. So when you think about IS28, think about using it to account for foreign currency transaction, which is also described as like the entity accounting of foreign transaction so for example if you are an entity and you trade with other entities outside ghana how do you account for the import and the export now that's foreign currency transaction even as an individual so it's also described as a, the individual stage transaction individual stage transaction so for example if i have 100 pounds and I'm using it to buy an item here in Ghana. Definitely, I'm not going to pay. Um, I'm not going to do the double entry in pounds. I'll do the double in entry in CD. How do I change the pound to CD? Is a single entity stage transaction. So I'm using it to account for foreign currency transaction. And then we also have to think about a situation where an entity has a subsidiary outside Ghana. So here we are in Ghana. The parent is a Ghanaian entity and then the parent has a subsidiary in Togo. Now the subsidiary will be using CFA and the parent, let's say, will be using Ghana CD for presentation. So how do we add? You know about consolidations, about adding parent entity financial statement and subsidiary financial statement. Are you going to add the Ghana CD asset to uh, CFA assets, the answer is no. And therefore, you apply the provisions of IS21 to translate. So here we are talking about translating the financial statement into the presentation currency. The, in the second stage, you are using IS1 to, to account for foreign currency transactions. So you convert transactions into the functional currency. But in the consolidation state, you are translating foreign operations activity into the presentation currency. Think about the initial measurement and subsequent measurement. And in consolidation, you have to 
know how to translate assets, liability, incomes, and expenses. We are talking financial statement translation, you know. So the whole of IAS 21 is to give you the chance to translate foreign currency transaction and to, to translate foreign operations or foreign subsidiaries or foreign associates. Okay, so now let's look at it in a bit more detail. So like I just mentioned, the objective of IS-21 is how to incorporate foreign exchange transactions and operations into the financial statement, individual entity stage. If you bought an asset from Europe, how do you do the double entry? How do you debit PPE and credit cash or bank? Because you bought it from Europe. Europe is Euro, Ghana is CD. So the IS-21 then provide guidance on how to incorporate these transactions into the financial statement. Then the second objective is how to translate financial statement into presentation currency. Then we are thinking group. Now the relevant question to answer, what rates to apply and how do you report the effect of changes? I, I told you IS-21 is about the choice of rate and how to account for differences. Look, if rates don't change, we wouldn't be talking about IS-21 because if we began the year with one CD to one dollar and end the year with one CD to one dollar, there is nothing to account for. But because we started the year with one CD to one dollar, somewhere in the middle of the year became one CD to three, then one CD to five, all these changes must be accounted for. And IS-1 provides you that guidance. So the scope. Some terms, standards, every standard comes with its own peculiar terms. So we need to be familiar with the terms of IS-21. And IS-21 really has terms. Functional currency. If you talk IS-21, you must talk about functional currency. is the currency of the primary economic environment within which the entity operates. The primary economic environment of Ghana the current functional currency, of course, will be the Ghana CD. If you are in America, the primary economic environment of the U.S., the functional currency will be the dollar. If you are in Europe, the functional currency will be euro. If you are in Togo, the functional currency. It is the currency that drives the factors of production. We have defined foreign currency, currency other than the functional currency. Foreign operations, a subsidiary, a joint venture, an associate, or a branch whose activities are based or conducted in a country or currency other than those of the reporting entities. So if I have a subsidiary and it's in Togo, if I have a, a, a branch and it is in Cameroon, then we have a foreign operation. Presentation currency is the currency in which the financial statements are presented. The currency in which the financial statements are presented. It may be the same as the functional currency, but most often it can be different. There are entities here in Ghana, their presentation currency is not the Ghana CD. It is dollar. Presentation. Whatever they do, they present it in a presentation currency which is different from Ghana CD. So you must take note of that. It is the currency in which financial statements are presented. Presented. Presentation currency. Different from functional currency. is the currency of where you are based. The currency that drives your activity. It might be different from your presentation currency. Exchange rate, of course, is the ratio of exchange of two currencies. Then you have a closing spot rate and the closing rate, which is the spot rate at the reporting date. And then the spot rate, exchange rate in, for immediate delivery. You have monetary items, units of currency held and assets and liabilities to be received or settled in fixed or determinable number of units of currency. So if you take a financial statement, some are monetary items because they are in units of currency. For example, loans, 
cash. Yeah, they are in monetary. They are monetary items because they are in units of currency. It's different from building. Building is non-monetary item. A building is a building. It's a physical object. But loan is a currency. Unit of currency. Yeah. Now, the biggest thing you must learn under IS 21 is how to determine the functional currency of an entity. How do you determine the functional currency of an entity? Because it's important to know the functional currency and then you differentiate it from foreign currencies. You must consider primary factors. You must consider secondary factors. The primary factors will be currency influencing sale prices for goods and services, currency of country whose competitive forces regulate or determine sale prices. So if you think about quarters by forces, what currency determine that? The labor, the demand, the supply, you know. So currency mainly influencing input costs. And then the secondary will be funds and receipts from financing activities and then from operating activities retained. All right. So the point is, if you want to know the currency, the functional currency of an entity, you must consider primary factors and secondary factors. Okay, all these are indicators of functional currencies. You must read to know how to determine them. And it's normally a, an essay type question to um, give factors that uh, an entity must consider in arriving or in choosing is functional currencies all right now how do we account for foreign transactions how do you account for foreign transaction if you buy an item of PPE how do you account for it if you made sales to somebody in Europe how do you account for it you must answer that question I'm buying an asset a machinery a plant or I have sold goods to another entity in Europe. How do I account for it? That is initial recognition, single entity stage. Record in functional currency by applying the exchange rate at the date of the transaction. So if you buy today, check the rate for today, apply it and do your double entry. It's that simple. When you buy PPE today, check the date you took delivery of the PPE. That date exchange rate use it translate and do your double entry that's what it means initial recognition so there is initial recognition day one and then at the end of the year reporting a subsequent year end that is if you still have balances in foreign currency you must now split between monetary items and use closing rate or non-monetary item and use historical rate or non-monetary item and use the fair value exchange rate at the date of fair valuation. So you know you have assets which you apply uh, historical cost accounting and you also have assets which you apply fair value. You revalue the asset. If you revalue the asset, then you must apply the rate at the date of fair valuation. If you use historical cost then you must apply the his exchange rate at the date of the transaction. That's all that, that means. And then the gains and losses on the monetary items will be recognized in profit or loss. But when gains or losses on non-monetary assets are reported in OCI, the related exchange difference are also reported in OCI. So if you buy an asset which is to be revalued, it means your revalue gains and losses will be to OCI. You know, revaluation surplus is to equity, OCI. Then if you do a translation of the balances and there is a gain or loss, exchange gain or loss, you must pass it through OCI as well. That's what it means. It's important to pay attention to this slide. It gives you what to do with initial recognition and subsequent recognition of foreign transactions. For the consolidation stage, we'll pause on it. 
I'm just running you through, but we'll do the single stage examples before we add it to consolidation. So just know that the method of translation from functional currency to presentation is dependent on the relationship between the foreign operation and its parent. And the standard defines that if the entity is a parent and then there is a subsidiary, but the subsidiary has some kind of control, okay, it is not fully dependent on uh, the parent, then its functional currency will be different from that of the parent. But if the subsidiary activity is an extension of the parent's activity, like the subsidiary must always ask permission from the parent before it does something. All goods come from parents, maybe just a little from the subsidiary buying its own stock for sale. Parents raise funds for the subsidiary. Like parents has a hand on control of everything the subsidiary does. Then that subsidiary is just an extension of the parent. So its functional currency will be the same as that of the parent. And that will inform how the financial statement will be translated. So when we think about translation of a financial statement, we are thinking about those that um, will have a functional currency different from the presentation currency of the parent. Okay, so how you translate a subsidiary financial statement is dependent on the relationship between the foreign operation and its parent. And the translation method must reflect the economic reality of the relationship. So if the foreign operation carries on business as though it were an extension, then the functional currency is the same as that of the parent. And therefore, movement in exchange rate will immediately impact the reporting entity's cash flows. Okay, translation rules will follow those of the single state. So it's like we are not, everything you do, your parent will be affected immediately because you are just an extension of your parent. But if the foreign operation is semi-autonomous, it's a bit free from the control of the parent. Now, take note, it is semi-autonomous. Semi. So, it is not autonomous, but semi-autonomous. Because if I have control, I have control. But how much control do I exert? If it is semi-autonomous, then its functional currency is certainly different. They will do their own thing and prepare their own financial statement and send me the financial statement to prepare the consolidated financial statement. Okay. And therefore, the financial statement must be translated into the functional currency of the reporting entity before consolidation. This is how far I want to go with IS21 for now. And as we pick questions and we resolve, we'll be adding more. My interest is for you to read, 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 just read, take note of the terms. And if you have questions, jot them down. When we meet in class, you will have a lot to discuss. Thank you.